we are going to go out to Colorado. We're going to talk to Lisa, she, her pronouns. Um, hey, Lisa, you sound like you've got something interesting to talk with us about today. What uh, What's on your mind? Hey, Lisa. Hello, Dave. Hello, SR. Um, yeah. Uh, on the one hand, well, I'll say I've been de uh, deconstructing for about two and a half years now. And the more I deconstruct, the more I love it. Um, but it's what it's really one thing it has done is it's really brought to the, to the forefront of my mind something that I never really thought much about, no. and and what it what it really pertains to most of all is. Certain times in my life, uh, in some cases, very recent times, when I felt like I, oh, how can I say it? You, uh, you know how it feels when you, a very deep instinct rises up in you and you say, you know, I need to take care of this now, or I need to rethink this, or, you know, I need to take a different direction, or whatever it may be, when you feel like you've really got that thing inside you telling you, yeah, I need to do such and such. But there have been some times in my life when that, that instinct, for lack of a better term, has been so poignant and so just out of the blue as if as if it's something that i would never have i would never have thought of because it it's coming from a completely different direction from uh, as opposed to how i typically approach things mm -hmm. so with this said that's what i find myself exploring now even though i'm i'm sure. largely deconstructed and yeah, I, the, the, the God of the Bible is beyond appalling. Um, but it's, it's brought up an, another question for me, something that I need to explore and, and try to find an answer to if there is one. But that's yeah. what prompts me to call today because I had no idea where to start searching for an answer to this. Yeah, can why, I why is it that some... Oh, sure, sure. Jump in. Yes, please. Yeah, because it, it almost sounds like something uh, that you're dealing with now is is was one of the biggest things that that I dealt with when stepping out of uh, faith, religion or, or belief in like the supernatural and stuff. Um, I had this very, very deep feeling that every single tiny little thing that happened in the world for me was a specific message that was put there by the universe. Like there was this guiding thing. Um, you know, it wasn't like a guy in the clouds with a long beard, but it was like the universe as a whole. And there was something about, you know, all of existence that needed to send me a, a specific message, you know? And a lot of times the way that that would, that would present itself was very, it, it, you know, sounds very similar to how these experiences are for you, where it it almost feels like there, there is this thing that I can tell is technically coming from me, but like, almost like somebody just whispered the answer into my ear first, and then I said it out loud, you know? Um, so there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different things about that, right? And the first one I think is really, really important to, to, at least start to have a good understanding of is just coincidence. Um, and a lot of us feel like we understand coincidence, um, but none of us have ever actually spent 10 years straight rolling a six sided die back to 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 back. Because when you do that, a string of 10 sixes is no longer particularly fascinating. It, it's almost guaranteed to come up, right? So because of our very limited understanding of the universe as a whole, because of our very limited time on Earth, we, we, we have difficulty when it comes to these intensely large numbers. Did, did you know, uh, actually, there are numbers out there that exist, but could never actually be spoken because the only way to do so would be to list every single digit in every single place. And they go on for 100 million digits and so 
you couldn't even get halfway through it before you would just die. Now, does that mean that that number is not real? No, of course not. It is absolutely out there, right? But the difference is that mm -hmm. our understanding of this small slice of what is existence doesn't really allow us to recognize that and internalize that in a way when we have this experience that is a one and a Googleplex, which is actually a number, just in case anybody's wondering, a very, very large number. Um, that one and that ridiculous chance, guess what? If we have more chances than that, statistically speaking, it's probably going to happen. And so what we see is we see the chance before that, and it doesn't happen. And then we see the the chance where it happens and we're like blown away. We're like, oh my gosh, this has a one in a freaking ridiculous chance of happening. How could this happen? This must be specific. This must be a message. The universe must be telling me something. No, it's just that at this point we have rolled the dice enough that we can get that really weird moment where 12 times in a row you roll a six. And it feels weird and it feels strange, but go ask anybody that's played like D and D for instance, for a long time, I guarantee you they have a story where it's like, man, I don't know what happened, but I just like rolled a bunch of twenties just back to back to back to back. Never had that happen again in my life, you know? Um, so there, there is that aspect of coincidence that exists in, in our world, but is also very difficult for us to really, really understand. Um, so I, I would I would offer at least that as one potential place to go look into. And there's a bunch of mathematicians and stuff that talk about it. And, and you know, it's a little dry sometimes. I get it, Lisa. But I, it helped me kind of feel better about those really odd occurrences. And then the other thing I would suggest is go look into things like free will and go look into things like like how the mind processes information and stuff. Um, I know Shannon Q has a bunch of really wonderful stuff out there uh, where she goes deep, deep into the brain processing and and how to how do we learn stuff and how do we synthesize things, you know, because that is what our brain does. Right. It takes in all of this information and information that we don't even realize we're taking in. Like we we think about touch, we think about smell, but we don't think about the orientation of our body, like our, our head being up here and our feet being down there. Uh, but if any of us were completely flipped upside down in a completely dark room with no sound and we couldn't touch anything, we'd still know we were upside down. Like we would absolutely feel that. And so because of all of that information that the brain is bringing in very casually, right? Like you don't think about it, but you constantly feel stuff on your skin when the wind comes by, you're, you know, get a little, little prickle here and there. And you're like, oh, OK, yeah, it's probably a little windy. Well, that just kind of goes into your brain passively. And then five minutes down the road, when you're getting ready to, to throw that football or whatever uh, or kick that soccer ball, I, I've been watching the World Cup, so it's in my brain. Um, that wind <laughs> plays into it. And you, you, you remember that, but you never really like consciously said, oh my gosh, it's windy. Maybe I need to put this out just a little bit more towards the 18, you know? Um, but let me, let me shut up at least for a second. Maybe some of that resonated with you and, and maybe Dave has some good stuff to throw in here, but what, what'd you think about it? Any of that, Lisa, any of that valuable? Yeah. It gives you can me, say no. It gives me something to it. <laughs> It, no, it gives me something to explore, and uh, and and thank you for mentioning the videos uh, of Shannon Q because that oh, yeah. that really might delve oh, into yeah. it. Because it, it to me, my what what is really the crux of all of this is, um, if I don't know, it, it, it's kind of hard to put into words that that really explain it well, but. It just seems to me that if you're, you know, you're going about your business or you're, 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 uh, you're undertaking whatever, you know, whatever it is you're doing that day and, and you're also putting a lot of effort into the project or whatever it is that you're doing. And then all of a sudden, as I said, as if out of nowhere, almost like a directive from the sky, so to speak, 
um, if something occurs to you, okay. something that you've actually thought of before, but never did for very strong reasons, you never did it. Um, so it, it, it just, I'm just, Oh, it just feels like I'm missing I, something here. I, and I and know I said, calling, just get us. Yeah. I know I said I was going to let Dave jump in, but I, I, I want to play this game with you real quick, Lisa, because this helped me in kind of in in this kind of moment. OK, so and again, it has to do with like free will. And and this ultimately led me down the route to uh, the acceptance that, hey, it doesn't seem that we do have free will. You know, now I'm not trying to push that on you or anything. You make up your own decisions on that. But play this game with me. OK, uh, do, you, do you go watch movies? Do you like movies? I used to like them years ago. I don't I, I don't find okay. myself watching them very often what, anymore. Pick pick one movie from your childhood that you remember watching. Pick one and just tell me what it is. Oh wow. Uh you mean young or, childhood or, or anything. Just any movie that comes to your mind, just the very first one. Lawrence of Arabia. Awesome. Now pick the second one. What's the second one? What's the next movie, Lisa? That comes to mind, uh, mm -hmm. To Kill a Mockingbird. Why didn't you pick that one first? You had access to it the whole time. You knew the name of it. You've watched it. You remembered it. Gregory Peck, right? Great movie. Great book. Yep. Why didn't you mm -hmm. pick that one instead really? of Lawrence of Arabia first? Well, let's see. Maybe just because I, uh, even though they both came out in the same year, uh -huh. um, Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, I'm not even sure why. Well, I love the That's music. Okay. And That's okay. Stop, stop right there, though, Lisa. That's okay. Because the fact that you're having to think about this so hard right now is, is a really good indication because it, it almost is if that just came up from within you without you really having to do anything. Almost as if, you know, somebody just came over your shoulder and whispered it in your ear real quick. You didn't actually go through a process of saying, well, let's pick Lawrence of Arabia because I'm a really big fan of the, tr the real to life story. And I think it's a good understanding of, you know, how, you know, countries battle and like individuals. Kind of, you, you, you didn't really go through all of that. You just kind of, pulled it out of nowhere seemingly from the depths of your brain and that's okay because it seems to be the case that's how we do everything and that that's all right that's just the way that our brain works it it holds all of this information and then every so often it'll just pick something and yeah it feels like in that moment almost like we're not picking it. Maybe maybe there's this external force that's picking it for us, and that's why it popped into my brain. But in reality, it just seems like that's what we're all doing all the freaking time. And that was something that led me, that that was something that led me down the route of eventually accepting, hey, I, I, I don't have free will. Nobody does. And, and we're just all kind of, you know, dominoes falling, you know, in, in place and whatnot. And, and maybe, maybe a little bit more understanding of that will help next time you have that feeling and you think, gosh, I don't know where this is coming from. I, I don't know why I'm picking this or why my brain is doing this. Maybe, maybe that'll help a little bit. Uh, I, I don't know. Does it, does mm -hmm. it at all? Or, uh, should I have just let Dave talk? It's probably the second one. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like, I feel like it's opened, uh, a little door for me in my brain, a new avenue to yeah. to start exploring so that's cool good. that's cool good. good good well to that point i'm just going to add this i don't need to say a lot more but um just remember that you've if you're deconstructing from christianity you're used to your neural pathways in your brain have there's grooves that have been worn in that in there you're used to believing that an external force is guiding you speaking to you this God is 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 speaking to you, answering your prayers, guiding you, showing you his will, so on and so forth. So that's a pattern that you've developed in how you approach your day, your life. And so when you get a thought randomly, you're assigning some kind of external force to it 
that doesn't need to be there. Like Secular said, that's just a thought that came up out of from within yourself. But you're used to a- assigning an external force to that thought. You're used to it being connected to something other than just you within yourself. We we get used to these patterns, and so part of deconstructing is truly not just deconstructing your faith in a God, but deconstructing how you think about things, how you approach life, how you do your days, what your day looks like, what's important, what's not important. Deconstructing everything about who you are and how you live life. And so all that has to be reconstructed once it's deconstructed and you start developing different ways of thinking about things and different ways of even thinking about how you think. And all of that is is something that takes time. And, and you're used to a certain way of doing things and letting go of that way of doing things or the way of thinking that you're used to, it can be a little disorienting and it can be a little confusing. So I think that may be also a part of what you're experiencing here. That's an absolutely awesome point, mm-hmm. Dave. Because yes, we we don't think about we don't think about the the physical structure of our brain that much. But seriously, exactly what he said is true, and we know this. We we've done brain scans on people, and we we can see that the brain has this amazing ability to rewire itself. Uh, unfortunately, that wiring can be hijacked and and told that what is normal and what is correct is actually wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's that's where I think a lot of the big problem of religion is. It's because they hijack those neural pathways and those grooves that, you know, stick in our brain be- because that's valuable. That that helps us remember not to touch the hot stove. Right. We did it once and our brain was like, right. damn, that sucks. You know, uh, but again, yeah, <laughs> it, it can be hijacked if if people have, you know, poor methodologies for truth or, or bad motives. So, um but shout back to us. Give us give us a final your final thoughts here, Lisa. And keep, we've, keep we've... going on your journey. Your sounds Absolutely. like you're doing pretty good on it. So Absolutely. hang in there, girl. Oh yeah, it was it was so rough at first, but it's been worth it by the ton. Um, but Heck just yeah. in closing, uh, yeah, I wanted to take the time to uh, thank you, Dave, also for what you mm-hmm. said because it brought to mind uh, a very old family picture. Uh, I was in my Sunday clothes. We were walking out of church. And I mean, I wasn't even in kindergarten yet. So that's how young I was mm. when, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I must have grown up in that from day one. And I, so I yeah, need sure. to take, uh, I need to take, I, I think, a more, cl- a closer look mm-hmm. at this whole component of, it, it, I guess what I, I guess a good way to say it in closing is I'm realizing in, in at this stage in the deconstruction, I'm realizing that it is a, it, it's a far more personal process to go through than I Absolutely. I ever ha- I would ever have suspected, and yeah. maybe that's the stage I'm in right now. It's really yeah. delving into just super personal, super deep areas of who I grew up to be and, and, and how I grew up and what I was taught all the time I was growing up. So, so thank yeah. you so much, both of you fabulous guys. Cause I, this, this definitely has given me something to explore here and that's great. Awesome. And don't, don't, it. don't forget Lisa, there are some absolutely incredible organizations like recovering from religion and the secular therapy project. And they are wonderful, wonderful places with some, amazing people that work there and you can just give a call up to recovering from religion any old time and you don't even have to chat about god or anything just have somebody to talk to that's trained and um you know can sit there and listen and and direct you to uh to a licensed therapist if if you know necessary so it doesn't hurt to take a little bit of extra time on yourself lisa so i'm glad you're doing it so 